Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the first part of this personal experience from Spirit's discussion is Sebastian and the Seventh Sphere Transition During which Mary channels Sebastian, an atheist spirit who previously spoke to Jesus a few weeks prior, asking questions about forgiveness and repentance, but who now has made the shift from being self-reliant to being God-reliant, and Sebastian shares his personal experience of the Seventh Sphere Transition. The session was recorded on the 6th of June 2018 from 2.15 p.m. in Willsdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome, everyone. I'm here with Jesus and we're going to do some mediumship today. And today there's a group of spirits who we spoke to some weeks ago who were led by a man called Sebastian. And if you haven't seen the discussion with Sebastian, go and take a look. Um, before you listen to this one, uh, Sebastian and his group were in the sixth sphere uh, when we last spoke to them. Mm. Mm. Hello, brother and friend. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to say, eh? <laughs> How can we answer that question yeah, easily? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're so happy to come back and speak with you again. If only to express our gratitude for the help that you gave to us last in our last discussion. Yeah, it's our pleasure. <laughs> yeah. oh, we've made progress yeah. since then. Yes, we can feel you've at least got to the seventh. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's difficult to convey the depth of our gratitude to you for this because we feel that this change has been by far the most profound in all of our lives. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it's difficult to say that we've just progressed a sphere because it feels <laughs> as if every aspect and el every element of our being has changed in some way and yeah. our senses are heightened in so many ways and our understandings our experience has changed in every way. Yeah. Uh, so how would you compare the happiness of the sixth sphere compared to the happiness of the seventh? <laughs> uh, one would have to say that the sixth sphere is not happiness at all. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny how you, we can sort of live in a place for such a long time, believing it to be the sort of pinnacle of our development and then move to another place and think, what, what was I doing there? <laughs> it, it is as if here the, the quality of emotion mm. is so incomparable yeah. to, to that which we experienced in the sixth sphere. Yes. It's, it's as if we have grown new senses or uh, the, the, and in fact, it yes. is the, the, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the emotional the sensations and the sensitivity and expression and experience is so we we understand now how closed we were to yeah. emotion yeah. and yeah. opening up this part of ourselves has changed our lives in ways that we it's barely this is very difficult to describe yeah yeah the the um you can see, can't you, the reason why, you know, we've had so many discussions with people on earth about emotion and, and yet, you know, it's funny when you talk about emotion, isn't it? Because you, you think you're experiencing it when you experience it, but as you become more and more sensitive emotionally and as God's love enters you and you ha have that experience, then, you know, the sensitivity of emotion is so much different that you think that before you were very almost emotionless, even though you were experiencing emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, how have you found that, the experience of learning some things about your father, huh? It, it, it is from God that we learnt emotion. Mm -hmm. God's, when one experiences God's emotion, one can understand that 
before that point, any emotional experience has been so limited uh, so as to almost be, it's not inconsequential, but it, it is like we feel as if we lived constrained in a, in a small box mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, receiving the love of our father opened us in ways that we we didn't know were possible mm. and in fact we would have fought to say that such a thing was not possible, possible. Yeah. when we yeah. met that was how we felt yeah and that yeah. is what we believed yeah and to to when we left you you had brought us to the to the gate mm. of our of our new existence and mm. and making that transition was such an immense shift in in everything that we believed mm. and yet it seemed to happen seamlessly mm. yeah it, it's funny how you know when you're totally absorbed in a process that you don't really notice the steps of each mm. thing you're doing do you really it's like yeah. So I was thinking, though, for the sake of our listeners who heard our original conversation, that it'd probably be good to sort of rewind a little back to how you so sort of see things now with the conversation we had. Does that make sense? And, and sort of because it might help our listeners sort of connect to the difference between experiencing emotion, you know, by being open with God's emotion compared to just the normal sort of human emotional experience, I suppose. Mm. And also the belief, the belief systems that had to be challenged is worth also, I think, think uh, uh, some clarification regarding belief systems about what you believed was possible and how that limited things as well. So... Yeah, well, first it must be said that in the sixth sphere, we, our lives were governed by our intellect yeah and yeah. our emotion the extent of our emotional experience was governed by really what we would intellectually allow mm. Mm. so of course we understand now that emotion is a thing that exists <laughs> Uh, whether the intellect wishes to acknowledge that or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we did limit our emotional experience and interpret our emotional experience through a very strong set of intellectual beliefs mm. uh, and intellectual dominance. Yes. Yeah. So this... It's remarkable, isn't it, how the, the mind can dominate such a powerful emotional condition Mm. Like, I find that always remarkable. Mm. Mm. Yes, and w we've come to see how much effort that was taking mm. and how much effort we had put into that process mm. in all of the years that we had been in the spirit world before the time that we spoke. Yeah. And this, this governance by our minds <laughs> is perhaps the largest thing that, shifted for us yeah yeah so when you looked at things uh, even in our discussion uh, last time you could see that uh, looking back on our discussion now you can see the times when your mind was just, just trying to suppress some quite strong emotions that were dominating the discussion yeah certainly yeah. certainly and the caution with which we um were living wasn't evident really. Mm. Uh, the fear within our belief systems w about emotion specifically and about uh, governance by God. Mm. Uh, uh, we believed very firmly that we were experiencing a high level of joy and contentedness. Uh, obviously, prior to our discussion, there had been some. Uh, we, we can see now we were already in a process of some change or reflection. Yes. Uh, yes. Which caused th those questioning and the the um, 
that some things weren't congruent in our reality, f- mm. for want of a better way of saying it. Yeah, something attracted you to the conversations about repentance, didn't they? That uh, yes. would not probably have normally done a few hundred years ago. Yes, mm. it, precisely. Mm. And so um, we had already commenced a process of change, but obviously during our conversation last, you you assisted us to change things so rapidly, but we can see now that it was the fear that within us about emotion and about um, our heavenly Father that mm. that was limiting us so strongly. Mm. And, and that is one thing that has shifted dramatically for myself and many of us is that uh, I saw it as as a diminishment of myself to give up my self-reliance, mm. to give up my what I call my self-governance mm-hmm. and to, to surrender to the idea that I, there was a limit to my knowledge mm. uh, uh, for me on my own, in my own personal discovery. That was quite a, a challenge for me that, and it was being challenged even during our discussion. Mm. Of course, now I understand that there is nothing diminished about me, uh, <laughs> only enhanced mm. by this process of uh, surrendering and, and embracing a loving governance and, and by desiring to be parented and to, to gain knowledge from that parent. Mm. Uh, it it's it was inconceivable for me prior to this transition that such joy was possible and such knowledge not only of the universe but of myself mm. the, the 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 level of change in terms of self knowledge uh, since accepting the love of god it, it, it it's incredible mm. That was the next question I wanted to ask you. Actually, was the, you know, um, the what's the best way of putting it? You remember in our first conversation, um, I was talking to you about the limitations of understanding and how there was this desire. You know, you'd embrace a new uh, area of ex- expertise or knowledge. Mm. You would initially feel very enthused about that. You know, discovery then eventually you'd get to the point where you couldn't discover any more about that. And then, of course, because you couldn't discover any more about it, you felt tired of it Mm -hmm. and moved on to another area of discovery in that cycle that many of you have been through quite a number of times. And have you found now since your transition that you've that you've revisited some of those things and found, oh, there was a whole lot more there that... (laughs) Yes. Precisely. Mm. That is precisely what has occurred. And it's overwhelming to understand that each of those things that took my interest, uh, which I eventually felt limited in, are now open to me. And I now have a deeper understanding just through, through my desire. I understand so much more about what I thought I knew And also I gain more knowledge of each of those things. Mm. And it it's almost too much. It's so overwhelming Mm -hmm. the fact that my desire has such potency here and Mm. such power that I can simply desire a thing and it's as if new worlds are opened up to me. Mm. And initially I found that it was <laughs> overwhelming is not quite the right word to express it, but it was so, um, well, it was a very emotional for me even to understand the power of my desire mm. in this new condition. Yes, and, and maybe for our listeners' sake there, we could just explain how before when you would discover things, it was driven a lot by sort of this intellectual desire for knowledge and the satisfaction that comes from having that knowledge. And there was so much reasoning and and Mm. thought uh, and there was 
almost an arrogance about my capacity to think. Yes, yes. And to reason and to, yep. dis to discover in that way. Yep. And then once, uh, once the limits were uh, obtained, there, there's that suppression of that emotion, that emotion of, uh, you know, dissatisfaction now that there's a limit obtained and not recognising that, oh, the limit's obtained and I can't think my way through this particular mm -hmm. limit means that you sort of detune from your interest in that particular subject, doesn't it? And it then, does. And then you go on to another. Whereas um, in the seventh sphere and beyond, it's sort of more like you just have a desire to know some more things. God can share what God can share with you as long as you're open uh, to the emotion of it all. And, and also, uh, and, and as, God, as you receive more of God's love, the soul's capacity to understand what's being shared is, is the critical thing, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. you start seeing that the soul has a capacity to understand now that is greater than it was. And also the capacity to understand is, is driven by how much love you've received and, mm -hmm. and the transformation that occurred inside of the soul itself. And, and this is the thing I feel most people sort of on earth don't get because we're so thinking we've always got there's limits all, always uh we don't uh, well, there's not much faith because as you know now like desire is a lot about faith now isn't it yes. so it, it's it's about oh i know that is all i need to do is develop a desire pure desire and now anything that i want to know about a certain subject can come to me mm -hmm. and and that that i think is like the, there's some remarkable difference between the sixth and the seventh sphere, even though they're one sphere apart. <laughs> yes, and that's it, 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 that was one of the major things I wanted to say to you is that the it feels nothing like <laughs> like just a progression from one sphere to the next. It's mm. unlike any other progression that I've ever made, mm. and I feel as if I was, as I said, living in a very limited. Uh, space externally and internally yeah. um, by yeah. comparison yeah. but this when you when we parted last you had you had us at the gate mm. to this seventh sphere and I found myself very drawn to that to that crossing, mm. to the to the. Um, and was it the same same for all of you, or just some of you felt that way? I, I would say about 20 to 30 percent of us felt that way yeah, and yeah. quickly shifted uh, made that that shift that transition mm -hmm. although I'll explain a little more sure, about that sure. um, uh, and the rest have taken their time some needed to spend time just at the gate mm -hmm. and to be further counseled and discuss, have discussions with those helpers who you brought to us, mm. uh, which helped, assisted them. And some are now making that transition mm. and, and some are still waiting, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, still considering their options. But for myself, I initially felt very drawn to make that transition. And then it seemed as though things changed very markedly and very rapidly <laughs> even though I can see that changes were happening in the sixth sphere constantly because of the intensity of what I now felt it, it everything felt very overwhelming mm -hmm. and it's almost as if I didn't complete that transition to where I am now for some time I I first went through a period of I asked for the Father's love and I received it. And then it was as if a whole new set of things became possible mm -hmm. and and my desire became far more potent, if I, for want of a better word, or it seemed to bring results mm -hmm. that I, and I wasn't accustomed to receiving information and change and results at, as rapidly or nor ones that uh, w felt so intensely emotional for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and and so i i had some stops and starts but i did want to say to you that i met my soulmate mm. in that very initial part of the process and well that's what that was the question mary and i were burning to ask you really wasn't it and you know that because um, yes. because most of you were were without your soulmates yes. um before yes. before even though you were in the sixth sphere so yeah. 
And one of the reasons why we felt you were without your soulmates was because most of them might have made the transition before you. Is that yes. what's happened? Yes, that, mm. was, that mm. was true. So Ariana is my soulmate and she may come and speak to you separately. Sure. Uh, but um, I found that meeting to be almost <laughs> too much and I, I withdrew and I found that I that I was in different spheres then. Yeah. I, I did um, go and spend time in the third and fifth spheres mm -hmm. for, for what seems to me to be quite some time learning mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, until I, uh, and and I can only say now that I feel that my home is here in the seventh sphere. Although there are times where I'm still leaving because something feels intensely, um, it, almost unbearable for me, and mm -hmm. I am naturally drawn to a different sphere where I I can process through the the knowledge or the experience that I have mm. if if that makes sense to you yeah uh and then and then I'm able to return again yeah because some spheres are uh, like very conducive aren't they to the relaxed processing of certain emotions mm -hmm. you could say mm -hmm. Whereas, and the changes yeah. the changes that needed to happen and being in the seventh sphere is obviously quite um intense if you've got some sort of emotions that are more better handled in a lower sphere you yes. you, you yeah. You you can feel you know so overwhelmed by it that you can't even feel the emotion properly, sort of thing. Yes, and that yes. certainly requires you going back. And that's why I did mention it to you guys uh, mm. when we talked um, that it, it'd probably be needed. Yeah. It's a kind of sensory overload, mm. and uh, while I can see now that the lessons that I had learned in natural love set me up very well to be able to make that transition. Once I confronted some of my arrogance surrounding God, I could I could ask for love and and make that transition. Uh, but then there was still so much in me that w was not prepared. Yeah. And yeah. certainly in relation to uh, to Ariana, I was not prepared mm. to experience everything, or, or I wasn't prepared for the intensity of that meeting mm -hmm. uh, emotionally. Um, and there were other lessons that I needed to learn surrounding the intellect and versus emotion and mm. the very nature of who we are as beings mm. I needed to change. Mm. Is, it, is it correct to say that all of you sort of believed that you were individuals already in the yes. sense of without your soulmates? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes, mm. and th th there is still uh, lessons or understanding that I need to develop in this way. Mm. I, I felt very much that I was an individual and, and so even when I met Ariana, I felt I, I first had to learn about the concept of soulmates, of, of having one partner mm -hmm. made by God mm. for me mm. and me for them. And so that was a change and a shift. But then when I, I asked God more about that and I asked for God's love more and received more information about that, about us being really two halves of one entity, that was too much for me initially mm. and I needed to regress to, mm. to sort of expiate or get out of me some of the... Uh, the misunderstandings that I had about that or the intellectual reasoning that I had that was opposing that. Yes, I think for the, the sake... The self-concept. Yeah, for the sake of our listeners, I think the best way to describe that transition is it's like a... It's almost like a psychological disturbance, isn't it? Yes. That goes on where you you have believed yourself to be just yourself, one, one person. A complete person. And a complete yeah. person, only yeah. to find out that that actually isn't true. And and the the psychological disturbance of that is 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 what you sort of need to work your way through mm -hmm. to realise that actually, no, you've never been uh, just one person, mm. actually. And mm. you are a half of one. And, yeah, and, and that is a major sort of a transition, as you, you guys would now know, those of you who've been through that now know. And, and, but I was wondering too, like how long, uh, what, Ariana was it? Was your yes. name of your soulmate? 
how long Ariana has been. Like, like, let me ask first, though, before I ask that. Um, so did you have relationships with women uh, in the sixth sphere uh, prior to your transition? Or, or were you guys sort of in and out of relationships is still is the best? <laughs> Uh, yes, in and out of relationships. I didn't value, um, I valued monogamy, obviously. Of course. Um, but, but it's sort of like serial monogamy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and even then I yeah. didn't, I felt I had, um, through the course of my life in the spirit world, mm -hmm. I really had two or three major relationships yes. yeah. uh, with women. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so I was not continuously in a relationship yep. since my passing. Yeah. So. Um, and when we met you, were many of you in a relationship then? No, almost exclusively we were uh, single. single. Yeah. yeah. Single. Yeah, which is what we felt when we were discussing things mm. with you. Yeah. So I had I had had a relationship with a woman. Yeah. Uh, in when I was. Uh, in the second and third spheres, it was sort of in that higher second yeah. to into the third sphere yeah. transition so for some period of yeah. time. Yeah. But uh, if for each relationship, I felt there was lessons that I needed to learn about love and mm -hmm. the relationship showed me, it taught me those things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it was quite clear that there was no longer that attraction there and mm -hmm. so we, mm -hmm. we parted ways. Mm -hmm. And so then again in the fourth sphere, I had a, 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 a sort of a significant relationship with mm -hmm. a woman mm -hmm. where we were partnered, for mm -hmm. want of a better word. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's a little, it, it's not really like uh, the earth. It's in, a sexual relationship, but not, not similar. It's, it's not the same as what people would perhaps think of it on yes. earth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, but it's of course sexual, and um, there is a lot of time spent together, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and at times almost confronting sometimes. Yes, confronting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so all of those elements that are in uh, uh, any relationship relationship on earth. On earth mm. Yeah, mm. and then once I entered the sixth sphere, I did for quite some number of years spend time with a beautiful woman mm -hmm. who. Um, Juliana mm -hmm. was her name, and we spent much happy time together, mm -hmm. uh, at times exploring, mm -hmm. uh, also continuing our learning and mm -hmm. refinement of love as mm -hmm. we move through the sphere. And then they reached a point where just neither of us, uh, we, we almost began to, what I see in retrospect, is... Um, we had healed so much of our sexual expression, which was out of harmony with natural love, mm -hmm. that there was almost a period where we passed through where, uh, and many pe people had experienced this, where we almost felt devoid of that longing. Of the sexual attraction. Of the sexual attraction mm. for, a, for a partner. Yeah, uh, so it's more like a friendship or companionship. Yes, mm. and we, some of uh, in the group had come to hypothesise that perhaps um, sexual relating was all a part of um, Injuries, rather a, than yes, mm. lower forms, lower of, forms love, of love, yeah. uh, or or mm. injuries, yeah. injuries as yeah. you call it, injury but based. When you're a six fear spirit, you don't see it as sort of injuries. You sort of sort of lower forms of love, higher higher development yes. means no, we're devoid of that now. Don't yes, we? we've mm. we've surpassed that need, or yeah, uh, and yeah. now now we're able to have a more perfect brotherly and sisterly love, and mm. there's no need for what we would have called base base desires. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how we explain things, isn't it? It's like yes. the, it's the, the progress that we make with regard to relationships means that by the time you reach the sixth dimension, you get to the stage where there's no real sexual attraction for anyone unless it's your soulmate. And so then there's the supposition that, oh, well, there must not be sexual attraction in mm. this sphere as our ultimate goal. Mm. And so at the end of the day, you, you sort of, yeah, it's just interesting how we use our intellect so powerfully to explain what's happening without considering there might be another alternative, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And, and so when I made that it, it sort of first 
I can't call it a transition because in a way I feel that I'm still making a transition to, mm -hmm. to permanence in this new sphere mm -hmm. because I dart it back and forth yeah, yeah. <laughs> often. But when I made that first crossing, mm -hmm. if you want to say, and mm -hmm. I received some of God's love and I felt this strong pull to enter this new sphere, mm -hmm. uh, I was so quickly confronted because I, on receiving some of God's love, I immediately could feel that there were injuries in the way that I was thinking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that this th much of my thought or my intellectual dominance would need to dissolve. Mm -hmm. And it started to happen also, and that felt very... It's almost like you feel like you're losing yourself again mm. after hundreds of years of establishing who you are. <laughs> yes, and then Ariana came to me and introduced herself to me and and I felt a strange mixture of desire and revulsion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Certainly. Uh, <laughs> and so I wasn't used to any more feeling revulsion mm -hmm. in any, of course, everything that I feel in my new state is, is heightened anyway. So yes, it almost yes. feels like my previous emotions were hardly even emotions. Yeah. But of course I had, because I realise now how shut down and how, um, how little flow there was of emotion. Mm. It's difficult to describe, but can can we sort of look at the revulsion feeling just a bit more yes. so for for the sake of our yes uh, well, business again? It's uh, like I know you, you if you're going through the process. Well, of <laughs> can I just say that I wanted to say that the revulsion I wasn't used to feeling any form of revulsion for so long. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but the what I had called revulsion in the past mm -hmm. was a mere whisper <laughs> to what I now felt. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it, it's sort of like, what is going on yes, now? Like, yes. yeah, I understand. Uh, the, and, and like in, in some ways, myself and Mary knew that as a group, you had mostly met your soulmate. So, so, but, but, and I did consider during our discussion mentioning the possibility, but, but, uh, but I felt that, um, you know, it'd probably be better if you go through the experience, given the fact that I could feel there was a number of blocks about that as well. And can I say that it, it, there's not everyone who made yeah. this change with me who has met their soulmate, but I no. was very lucky to. Yeah. And I do want to say before we speak more how grateful I am to have met her because she's yeah. exquisite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what sphere is she? Yeah. She's in the seventh sphere. Right. She's yeah. been there for how long? Uh, much longer than... The, she clearly... Well, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? I'm asking yes. questions that require a lot of background, I know. I knew her as a child. Yeah. We played together as small children. It often happens. Mm. Mm. But then uh, various things, circumstances meant that we didn't spend time together uh, beyond the age of 10 years and neither of us uh, had considered each other in that way mm -hmm. in any sense. Mm. Um, but so we passed at similar times but she in the way that I have been so emotionally limited it seems that she has always had a very open heart mm -hmm. and felt a lot emotionally and Seemingly, this has assisted her to progress far more rapidly than myself. Mm. Uh, she also, also because culturally, I suppose, in our lives on Earth, I was raised to be um, a very independent and self-reliant, whereas women were often um, rewarded for... Uh, for getting, getting married and... Yes, and, and, so and sort of accepting some form of authority. Yes, yes. And so those things, her softness and gentleness, which I feel was always with her, mm -hmm. uh, was with her when she passed. And she was not as, as rebellious as I about having, <laughs> accepting the idea of a loving authority. And mm. so. Mm. Did she know she, you were in the sixth fit? 
yes, she knew, mm-hmm. she knew, but but had never been able to reach me mm-hmm. and didn't really know. She had just. She didn't really know who I was. Mm-hmm. She just n- had been told that that's where I was. And and she the reason why she couldn't find you easily is because you were so closed down to this whole concept. Right? Yes, mm. yeah. very shut down in a yeah. way that I didn't feel that I was rejecting, mm-hmm. but I can see now that I was. I just felt yeah. there was nothing there. And the strength of your psychological distress is a, a large part of the shutdown to which you would have yes it it challenged my very self-concept meeting yeah, her yeah. yeah yeah so um so with regard to uh meeting her now when let's go back to this revulsion feeling that you were describing yes. <laughs> because because i think some of our listeners go what you met your soulmate and you felt revulsion and um, can you now put your finger on what the revulsion was about Well, it it does speak to what you just said. Mm-hmm. The um, the challenge to my it, it's two things really. Mm-hmm. The challenge to my concept of myself yes. as an independent, self reliant man who was able to choose <laughs> also mm-hmm. um, a partner and also was not in need. It was very important to me that I. I had attained this state that I was what I perceived myself in the sixth sphere to be very loving Mm -hmm. and not in need of anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, And meeting Ariana made me feel that 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 had been a false perception. Because you could start to feel that you needed her? Is Um, that what you felt? No, more I could feel from God that without her, Mm -hmm. I was not a complete entity Mm -hmm. so it felt almost that i was now in need of something that was missing from myself Mm -hmm. and it was also being forced upon you is another probably feeling you felt would it be (laughs) um well i felt the truth was forcing it upon me if that makes sense she she was not and she was not forceful obviously uh, she was not forceful and um she also it was more the feeling that I needed to confront that um, that in my future she was a necessary part of my future. Mm. I wanted to have this relationship with God, but I wasn't sure if I wanted a relationship with a woman, especially a woman not of my own choosing. Mm. Mm. So that was one part of it. And the other part of it was really so that was i felt a revulsion you know in a way there does that make sense a sort of a rejection of all of this confrontation of my self-concept yes and so, the concept of my future so the, you, could you say that the revulsion was like the concept your self-concept being challenged so extremely and so extremely emotionally being challenged <laughs> yes caused you to want to reject her all together yes yes and to feel almost um i felt there was something alien in terms of how i needed to conceive myself and conceive of her it was almost as if i needed to come to terms with the fact that i wasn't a person in and of myself Mm. and therefore how did I conceptualise people then? And, yeah. and how did I conceptualise her? Because she, was she a person or was she me or who was I and how does it all work? Yes. I received, really, I met her and received the truth from God about soulmates almost simultaneously. Mm. And um, I, she she presented herself to me and introduced me to this idea of a soulmate and I immediately asked God for the truth about soulmates. Mm-hmm. And so it happened very rapidly. And so um, while I found her ver- and find her to be very beautiful, I also just felt revulsion that, mm-hmm. I, that this is, uh, it was a challenge to me emotionally, as you yeah, say. And that yeah. was the second part of what I was going to say is that the, the intensity of the challenge was 
also in this hi- new highly emotional state that I was not mm. yet accustomed to. And, so, and feeling out of control already. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Then, and then to have that added to it, where your whole self-identity is now being confronted. Yes. A very, very difficult sort of a process, although very <laughs> enjoyable results. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So to be fair, we haven't spent a great deal of time together. Yeah. I've come to I still feel that I'm reassessing that sense of identity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I've come to seek her company mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. because it is it is very pleasurable and wonderful. Yeah, of course. And and how did how did she feel about the revulsion you felt? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, she has been nothing but compassionate and understanding. Yeah, yeah. she she didn't. Perhaps she can talk to you as well, but sure. she, I, I think I can reflect her feelings yeah. uh, accurately. She didn't feel rejected because it was as if she was um, full of the, full of joy at meeting me, mm-hmm. and then completely compassionate to because she could sense what was being challenged in of me so she knew what you were going through it was quite it. transparent to her what i was going through and so of course, i don't yeah. think she took it personally <laughs> <laughs> when did she first learn about the concept of soulmates a much much sooner in her progress in the spirit life mm-hmm. so from what i understand from her as as early as the third sphere, mm. she began to be educated. Mm. Uh, and so, obviously, uh, she has been open to this and in full knowledge of this concept for a, a much longer period of time. Mm. We've been in the spirit world for similar amounts of time, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. most of my endeavours have been are in a very self-reliant and intellectual (laughs) uh, exploration and knowledge of truth. But uh, obviously I value love. I value what I perceive to be love and I did seek to attain it to to uh, improve myself in love. Mm. I think this is perhaps a great distinction in the way that I would describe it. Prior to this transition, I was always attempting to refine and to grow love within myself Mm -hmm. and since we spoke now i'm seeking love from outside of myself uh from god Mm -hmm. and so i'm in the past i was wanting to develop love inside of myself and now i'm wanting to receive love into myself Mm. and this I feel quite moved in uh, in how to explain that mm. to you and your listeners because mm. the it, one can kid oneself, delude oneself when one is attempting to develop love within oneself. That mm. that 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 is a um, and it is not to say that it isn't a noble pursuit or that it isn't a worthwhile activity but it is so self-reliant mm. and so yeah. and that and thus so so limited mm. since i've begun to seek love from the father this i i've grown so much and so rapidly and the what felt dry within me now feels full and flowing and um Passionate. Passionate. Mm. Um. <laughs> I think that's a good thing to, to talk about for a bit because on Earth, there is, there, as you know, there are developing concepts now that love is not really a feeling, that, it's, that you mm. know, many people consider it to be a quality rather than a feeling or, or consider it to be a thought rather mm. than a feeling. Mm. And you can see, of course, where that comes from, the, this... It definitely comes from spirits who have been developed in natural love, but ha- and have used their intellect to grow in love. But mm. but uh, obviously, it doesn't come from spirits who have grown sort of with God emotionally. And so you can see that a lot of people on Earth have these really strong concepts that 
love is a quality. It's not a feeling. It's, mm. it's not an emotion. God, God's love is not an emotion. It's a quality of mm. God, or it's a it's a state that God is in, rather mm. than emotion God feels and so forth. And and it's interesting, isn't it, to compare that with because because you probably in the sixth year would have, if you considered God at all, probably would have thought that way still. Yes, um, a lot of a lot of. Um... A lot of commonly accepted thought in the sixth sphere, I would say, is in harmony with the truth about God's laws, mm. that laws exist that are loving, uh, that uphold love, but that it's a very impersonal universe and mm. that if God does exist, then God is interacting with his or her children it's through these Bio. laws. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was the other thing when we first met you. Of course, I've, could we say you were diehard atheists? <laughs> is, there, is there a way that a person on earth might express it? <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> Not perhaps. that you could die. <laughs> but uh, and so, so I'm interested in that transition too of opening up to the possibility. Obviously, you, I could feel through our conversation there was the logic uh, that was confronted with the possibility. Mm that God, perhaps, perhaps God could exist as, mm. a, as a concept and therefore, um, but how difficult was that for some of you? And, and I, I would say some of you still might be finding that difficult. Is that true? Well, I think that once, yes, and I think that my friends who are still uh, waiting to make the transition, mm -hmm. or to make the crossing, for yeah. want of a better term, yeah. uh, it, they're still finding that very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the benefit that I have received personally was was being willing to make that a connection with God um, and allow that initial contact to to break down so many of my atheistic <laughs> belief systems, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, for myself, my self-importance and my my prowess as an individual or my my ability to attain things as an individual yeah. was one of in fact one of my biggest blocks to the truth about god so could you say then that the that it wasn't so much um, like for your other friends who have yet to make the transition, mm -hmm. if uh, if they're open to comparing the emotions you've had with their own, mm -hmm. it feels to me that their emotions are more about God specifically mm -hmm. than you had. Like it felt mm -hmm. to me that with you, it was more about you yes. and what you were going to have to give up if God yes. was there. Yes. Whereas with them, it feels to me to be more about God and mm -hmm. God, it, it sort of uh, opinions or or well-established ideas about God that have to be given up, which is a difficult process to do sometimes. Yes, uh, yes, and that's very correct. Many of them since their earth life have really had sort of atheist concepts or um, concepts of God where God is very impersonal and so it's very specific about mm their perceptions of God, whereas I, my feelings were such that I just, I suppose I, when I think back to myself on earth and through my progress, I was always driven really to prove myself as a man and an individual. And I can see that the residue of those injured desires was still with me in the sixth sphere hmm. in in terms of um, I had reached a point where I felt uh, quite proud of myself as an individual and so I felt that the acceptance of God would be in some way diminishing my achievement as an hmm. individual hmm. Hmm. and and that you you're correct that 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 um, that's not been as much of a, an impediment as some of my other friends who do have and have taught, in fact, in this sphere and to people in lower spheres about a very different concept of God. Mm. Whereas I just felt that it was inconsequential and that it wasn't, 
that God really wasn't a part of the picture. Yeah. Certainly yeah. not in a personal way. Yeah. In fact, uh, that was my aversion, really. Yeah. 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 So um, just uh, again, for the sake of uh, people who are listening, could we compare a little your home uh, in the sixth sphere with your home in the seventh sphere? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If we can, uh, if we can compare, firstly, measurements, <laughs> just for the sake of, to gain some kind of earthly context, of, you know, uh, for, for people who are listening. Yeah, well, it's interesting because in the sixth sphere, I, I wouldn't say that it, it is difficult to describe because um, how can I best describe this? I, I had quite a spacious home in the sixth sphere. Mm -hmm. And I would say that my home here is quite spacious and it's not, uh, um, it's not the kind of, it's not the kind of measures that people on earth would be accustomed to. Yes. Like square footage. Exactly. <laughs> that I wish to describe the differences yep. in, I suppose. Yep. It's as if my home in the sixth sphere was spacious uh, and changed. It changed, I changed it often. <laughs> If, yeah. if that makes sense, a sort of I... Did you go to different sort of yes. locations? Yes. And, yeah. I went to loca different locations and spent and, time in different locations. And a home in each location yes. and so forth. Yes. Mm. Um, but my homes in the sixth sphere were much like my state in the sixth sphere, mm -hmm. which was quite... Um, a little impersonal. Yes. <laughs> uh, impersonal. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of good... Uh, Objectives. <laughs> yes. Um, it feels almost as if the space there, there was a lot of space, but, um, and there was colour, but in the seventh sphere, it's as if the, even the fabric of, <laughs> Even in the material uh, that my ho home is built mm -hmm. in, and the furnishings and the the air, mm -hmm. <laughs> the 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 atmosphere within the house, is just vibrant. Mm. It feels living, oh, like electric. You know, <laughs> electric. Yeah, yeah. That's a great way to say it. Yeah. And and I want to say emotional. <laughs> yeah, of course, because um, <laughs> that's what, why it's all of those things that we just stated. <laughs> yes, it's hard to describe. Uh, a home as being emotional because obviously it doesn't have emotional but no. emotion but it feels imbued everything feels imbued with energy and uh, uh, and, and vibrancy and vibrancy and color and, and, color and mm. it, the senses my senses feel enlivened enlivened by being there. by being there mm. whereas by contrast in the sixth sphere everything was very be aesthetically beautiful mm -hmm. and at times cololorful but mm -hmm. but now looking at looking it, you sort of back think it's to it or... seems <laughs> empty it seems like yeah. in space sort of full of no atmosphere <laughs> yeah, yeah gotcha yeah. um and, and not exciting to be there not exciting to be there and it really a lot as my state was there mm. um pleasant and kindly and nice yes, and loving yeah. and, and technically and strong yeah. and, <laughs> and quite aesthetically beautiful and clever and yeah. full of design, yeah. uh, but... But without the passion. Without the passion. <laughs> without the... And almost without the rounded edges. Yeah. <laughs> That's more of a metaphor than, mm. than, mm. A, than a reality. Than a reality. But, <laughs> but it, everything in my seventh sphere home feels comfortable and um, enlivening and as if it's kind of cosy, even though it's massive yeah. and beautiful and bright. It assists your growth rather than just supporting your growth. Yes, yes it's, it's, it, it, and it stimulates yeah. my growth yeah. rather than my sixth sphere home was very much under my control. And, <laughs> and basically matched your growth. It matched my growth, yeah. yes. That's yeah. how I controlled it. It yeah. matched my growth. Whereas here, I, I suppose it's because my own desire is engaged, mm. then my environment is stimulating me as well yeah. in this new way. Yeah. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, isn't it, how our home, 
reflects our condition. Mm. And yet it's not something that I, I knew that intellectually. Mm. But now that there's been such a marked change in my condition, uh, the condition of my desire and the condition of my aspirations, yeah. And the experience of myself is so dramatically different. I have a whole new appreciation for how my home reflects my condition mm. because my home exists in a way that I didn't believe it was possible for, a, <laughs> for, a, for an abode to be. To be yeah. Yeah. And then looking back at your six fear abode, um, you can see too, can't you, that it was telling you a lot of things about <laughs> <laughs> yes. what was really yes. going on, but yes. just ignore all that. <laughs> exactly. And I was very aware that my condition in the sixth sphere, or in any sphere, mm. uh, was reflected in my home. Mm. So, mm. But I didn't realise that because I was in charge of my growth, Yes. Uh, you, you know, that I was very... Uh, I want to say control. I was controlling what happened next and mm. my aspirations were, um, I was self-reliant. Mm. I was self-reliant, mm. so mm. it was under my control. Mm. So uh, the shifts that happened in my home, I knew shifts were happening in me and it, it felt quite sort of cause and effect. Now in my new home, it feels almost dynamic mm -hmm. And uh, that the the home almost triggers change, but I understand that's because I myself have this aspiration, and so every attraction and every environment mm -hmm. is stimulating that uh, change in me because of my aspiration for mm. for that growth with God and for for growth that's led not by myself but by this more loving father mm, mm. <laughs> um, i sort of feel the biggest change that i've made is surrender to a loving uh, guidance <laughs> mm. and uh, a respect for this god who knows more than me and and is capable of making wiser um is wiser than me in what i should choose and so Everything that I think that's why everything about everywhere I go is so different now. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's something that um, if I had to say that that the single change that I've made, then that I made in that crossing, it was that mm. once I received God's love for the first time, I suddenly realized there is a wiser being than myself. And I can learn, I can trust, mm. I can trust that father because mm. that's not something that I ever experienced on earth mm. or, or since passing. I yeah. can trust that father and that, I see that some of my other friends who crossed with me or who have been coming back and forth, their, their crossing has been slightly different in that I don't feel that they're as connected to that one truth as I am. Mm, I'm mm. very connected to that now. And so I feel that everything is enlivened. Mm. And while I see things are dramatically different for them as well, I feel there's, and I feel there's other lessons that they are more connected to than I am myself. This one thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> this one surrender to a loving guidance, mm. it seems to be revolutionizing everything. And coming to trust, like you yes. say, is a, is a big issue, isn't it? Like, and, mm. and of course, everyone has different emotional reasons why they can't trust God mm. initially and have to work through those particular things. Mm. So uh, just asking a question about the, um, your belief about the universe in the sixth sphere. Um, compared to your belief about the universe now. Um, so. yeah, yeah, I would have to say again that it was so limited. Everything about my sixth sphere existence and state seems just so limited now, even though I was supposedly open to the to the concept of infinity mm -hmm. in the sixth sphere. Yeah. <laughs> it Didn't now, really believe in it. <laughs> it seems laughable. It was an intellectual thing that I yes. was open to, but there was no emotional recognition of what that 
is yes of so, what infinity is so you sort of believed in the sixth figure that the universe was limited really in a way yeah, yeah. yes yeah, even though you had the intellectual concept that it must be unlimited yes um i still believed it was limited and mm. and really um and you were hitting the limits regularly <laughs> yes you really each time i confronted what i perceived to be a limitation in the direction i was going in mm. and i made the shift i never really analyzed this is what i mean i, I didn't really i wasn't emotionally connected to most things mm. and i can see as i think came up in our past discussion how that was limiting it, my logic mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. 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 i was thinking too that it'd be great uh when you guys make the transition into the eighth that you come oh. back and have a chat about that yes <laughs> I, I, just the thought just the very idea of making that transition mm. what an incredible privilege mm. i couldn't believe when i was first told about that mm. yeah that such a thing is possible. Yeah, yeah. And to 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 reach that. Yeah, yeah. And it's sometimes even when you're living in the seventh, it's still hard to believe. Sometimes. Yes. Isn't it? Um, it's sort of yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It feels such a privilege. Mm. But and as I say, I, while I have a home here, I, I wouldn't say I'm a permanent resident. resident. <laughs> Not a permanent resident of the land. No. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for your girl, for Ariana, yes. Um, how, how does she feel now that you like you're in her life? It's perhaps <laughs> fairly pleased. <laughs> fairly pleased. <laughs> Yes, yeah. she, she, um, well, she's with me as often as, uh, as I allow, I suppose. As your emotional condition will allow. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, yeah. and at the moment that is for brief periods, really, mm -hmm. because I quickly become overwhelmed. Yeah. And now we spoke about the revulsion, but also the, the, um, uh, I suppose it's the attraction, the attraction I also find very confronting. It disturbs you. Yes, <laughs> because it's it's an attraction not based from my mind. Yeah, it's it's an attraction. And it feels uncontrollable. It does. And it does. And it feels almost. I know this is not the right word, but to try and give your listeners an idea, it always feels instinctual. Yeah. Uh, but it's not it's not like an instinct yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but it, it's it's like a, a a feeling of being drawn to a person for reasons that m my intellect can't keep <laughs> can't compute yes, yeah. <laughs> um, so it almost feels like it's something out of my control but mm. but obviously th there's an emotional quality of of desire within that attraction Certainly, that's also yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah.